We're now getting closer and closer to connecting all the mysteries that have tied us to this story so far. With Jangok and Mudok trapped in Chonbogwon, many of you have guessed that the Crown Prince would come to the rescue, and so he did, in heart-fluttering fashion. <laughs> A love tetrahedron exists now with Mudok, Jangook, Soyeol, Gowon, Yeonook, and Soyi, with Master Lee creating an uneasiness within Park Jin over maidservant Kim. The Queen reveals that the Ice Stone does in fact have the power to revive people or save them from petrification. By reviving Yunik Kim to save face and subsequently killing him, Park Jin and Songrim are now fully convinced that Jin Mu and the Queen are in possession of the Ice Stone. With Jungook's final duel looming, we find out that he has finally reached the level of Chisu, with Master Lee guiding him along the way Jangook finally catches a golden fish out of the waters of Chungyung Deho, a feat only achievable by someone who can control the energy of water. Although his confidence is put to the test when he finds out that his final opponent is none other than So Yo. With Maduk as the prize, we get a glimpse of Jangook fighting Yo, showcasing his newfound powers. Nevertheless, the more experienced Yo wins the match, as well as Maduk. New revelation regarding Buyun acknowledges that she might have been powerful enough to control the energy of the sky, which also means that her soul has merged with Naksu's and is able to avoid going wild and being petrified. This also explains why Master Lee, who reveals he is a soul shifter, has a soul over a century old and the body of someone in their 30s. With Zhang Ang's return looming, we are left in suspense as to what will happen in the palace. Oh, ho, ho, ho. what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. You guys are so amazing in the comment section that even though after the latest episodes, you tend to go back in our older videos to drop in your comments about the latest episodes, which when I'm looking through the comments, I'm like, oh, can't look at that, can't look at that because <laughs> Those are spoilers before we've even seen the video. A lot has been revealed and they keep on dropping these nuggets every two episodes. With Master Lee, like the biggest revelation being Master Lee is a soul shifter. And so now there is a mystery uh, more broader than what, how is he this old? And that mystery is solved. But now it's like bringing up new questions like who exactly is Ooh. Master Lee? And we can only assume and we can only have these wild ass theories. For me, the first thing I would say is that, and I would assume is that Master Lee is actually So Gyung. Like, He's a hundred years, his soul is a hundred years old, but he's in a younger body. And so I can only assume that as master and pupil, there was only one way for So Gyung to live live on. And so, boom, yeah, there it goes. It's, it, it is very likely that that is the case, but <sighs> given the fact that the calamity happened over 200 years ago and over 200 years ago, So Gyung was already old. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it stands to question how his soul is only over a century. Right. And that his soul would be closer to like 300, mm -hmm given So Gyung's current age at the time of the calamity. So I'm thinking that he was So Gyung's pupil, but then the pupil kind of like went rogue and decided to soul right. shift themselves. And that's where we are at today with Zhang Yang returning. Uh, I'm assuming he has some more information for us, you know, in the next two episodes next week. That guy. We'll find out, you know, that was, that's been, you know, as much as we say, like the ultimate revelation of these last two episodes, the ultimate revelation is where the hell is Zhang Yang? And what is he going to do? What is mm -hmm. he going to reveal when he comes back? It's much more clear that because these souls can avoid being petrified or running wild because in the case of Master Lee, he's still who he is. And then in the case of Moduk, Boyun, and Naksu, they should be okay as well. Absolutely. And now in this current predicament, we have Master Lee in front of the court revealing that he is a soul shifter and also revealing that he can detect soul shifters. And so this kind of brings to question in Jung Uk's mind, did he know that Muduk oh, was Naksu this whole time? Mm -hmm. But also, is he going to like the start of the next episode going to reveal, hey, you're not the real queen, you're yeah. a soul shifter, you're Shem and Choi. It seemed like in the previous it wasn't going to happen. He does bring back the Gwagu, like the subsala dog that kind of mm -hmm. can detect soul shifters. And Jang Uk is running around with the dog trying to like find soul shifters and uh, this whole showdown happens. But, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> but in any case, that brings a bigger question in my mind because Jin Mu reveals that Bo Yun had the power to control the sky and we are are left wondering because you have the power to control the sky you also have the ability to control the ice tone and so it's only i'm only assuming that the the couple of people or the people that can control the ice tone is buyun shaman Choi, and jang gang and perhaps master lee which brings us to the other mystery with buyun having been completely and utterly solved mm -hmm. as we learn that muduk does in fact have the mole behind the ear yes. and the scar on the arm which 
it's her. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's no mystery there. It all comes down to how her identity is going to be revealed to everyone else because now she's under the suspicion of Park Jin, mm. who is uh, investigating her background and uh, has now caught her, uh, not red-handed, but caught her in a precarious situation, kneeling over the dead body of Merchant Guy. And I, as I was watching this, I was like, I, I would have just, you know, I would have established my alibi by yelling immediately oh my gosh this guy is dead <laughs> yeah. because the guy in the front mm -hmm. can corroborate i just got there yeah and so now you know if that's not the case if they're not going to use the logic <laughs> the logical <laughs> conclusion uh she's going to be in a tight spot and i wonder what's going to happen now she will be like i guess like under the control of park jin and and song rim and and the mystery of her being boyun and modok that he's getting a little bit closer it doesn't matter how dim-witted he is most times, but he's going to start to kind of put the, the yeah. pieces together. But then we have Wutek, who is taking this Ooh. kind of soul thread blood bloodletting thing mm -hmm. out of uh, Choyun. Mm -hmm. And we're wondering, of course, I, I think we can safely assume that he's going to use it to insert it into Soyi yep. so that she could fool the, the reliquary to opening for her and recognizing her as part of the family. There's also this thing with Soyi where she is like smitten with Soyul because yep. he saved her. And this is why I said there's this love <laughs> tetrahedron that's tetrahedron. happening. Tetrahedron. <laughs> where it's, it's more than just a triangle at this point. Everyone loves each other and yep. we're not going to be able to escape it. And so I'm wondering since she's going through this stuff with the scars on her hand and with the mole and the acid on the wound to make the scar yep. uh, visible, like, is she going to remain Jin Mu's puppet? Is she going to reach a point where she can't take it anymore and so Yul mm -hmm. has to save her from this situation? That's crazy because, like, the only thing that was going through my mind, it was like necromancing and Neon Genesis Evang Evangelion, you know, like, with this, like, slimy thing that, that he extracted from from Choi Yun's neck, it's going to be re reinserted into <laughs> So Yi, and thus, because, thus giving her the power to open those doors, as you said. But I think So Yi is going to eventually come to grips with the reality of things, right? And kind of like uh, do good by Mudok or something like that. I think uh, I think So Yi is going to be is going to play a huge part in revealing Mudok's actual identity. I think because she was walking around mm -hmm. with the Jin family crest and the sash, she's going to say, "Hey, Mudok was blind." Mm -hmm. And she was walking around with that sash and crest, so she has to be Jin Buyun. Mm, and they're, and then Park Jin is going to start to connect that story, the story of her pretending to be blind. And then Jin Hoogyoung is going to be like, ah, oh, I've been blind this whole time. What is happening? <laughs> That's recognized. my daughter. <laughs> yeah. She's only a couple of years older. So now, you know, in the in the preview, we look at Jung Ang. He finally returns. We don't know what he's going to reveal. Mm. And uh, we are left with uh, Master Lee holding this, holding this huge revelation over the court about how he is a soul shifter and what he's going to do next in opposition of Jin Mu and uh, Shaman. Choice. Besides all of that that just happened, there's a small little smidgen of uh, thing as we talk about <laughs> uh, the tetrahedron that happened that exists in Romance Land. Uh, Jungkook finally sprung it on uh, Mudok. Yeah, and that was really awesome to see. I thought it would, they were gonna wait until like the end, where they become like powerful Avengers and they combine into one. But you know, they they did it sooner or later. You know, I, and I think the Crown Prince is really starting to grow on me because of all the things, all the shenanigans that happen with him having the jade, throwing it away, Mudok trying to find it, and she finds it, recaptures the heart of Jungkook, and then they. Plan a big wet one, which 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 makes me really really happy. At the beginning of this series, I thought that the Go On was going to be the person that was going to be the douchebag, like <laughs> written exactly as a douchebag, so yeah. that we mm -hmm. would hate him. But I think you know he is on on the trope of a Sundere. He's just like someone who really who who is smitten with Maduk, but just acts really cold. Yeah, and uh, just like oh no, you're a filthy Maduk to me. Uh, I that doesn't mean anything to me. You don't mean anything. To to me but then every like he he, he forces his uh, eunuch to yeah. go uh, search for the for the jade uh, in the pool and everything he does is for the sake of Modok um, but you know he's yeah. very someday with her I think deep down inside he's actually a good person yeah absolutely and he's just 
acting out because he's a lonely child. <laughs> <laughs> but let us know what you guys think, what's going to happen in the next two episodes. Leave it in the comment section below. There's a lot of theories that can come out of these last two episodes, and we have our own, including Master Lee is mm -hmm. so young or Master Lee. I, I don't have a larger theory mm -hmm. with Master Lee. I think so young or Master Lee is too young in terms of soul age to be so young. So I'm kind of ruminating and kind of letting my thoughts fester until the next two episodes, mm -hmm. um, which is, I guess, the <laughs> final episodes. No, there's 20 episodes. Oh, so. okay. So we have we still have a lot of time to theorize and to kind of speculate. Uh, but let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Asian entertainment and K-pop reactions. But as always, this is where we're watching this Sunday. We'll see you guys next time.